gluconeogenesis is a metabolic pathway that results in the generation of glucose from non-carbohydrate carbon substrates such as pyruvate, lactate, glycerol, glucogenic amino acids. While also odd chain fatty acids can be converted into glucose, it is possible for at least some even chain fatty acids. It is one of the two main mechanisms humans and many other animals use to keep blood glucose levels from dropping too low. The other means of maintaining blood glucose levels is through the degradation of glycogen. Gluconeogenesis is a ubiquitous process, present in plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, and other microorganisms. In vertebrates, gluconeogenesis takes place mainly in the liver and, to a lesser extent, in the cortex of kidneys. In ruminants, this tends to be a continuous process. In many other animals, the process occurs during periods of fasting, starvation, low carbohydrate diets, or intense exercise. The process is highly exergonic until ATP or GTP are utilized, effectively making the process endergonic. For example, the pathway leading from pyruvate to glucose 6-phosphate requires four molecules of ATP and two molecules of GTP. Gluconeogenesis is often associated with ketosis. Gluconeogenesis is also a target of therapy for type 2 diabetes, such as metformin, which inhibits glucose formation and stimulates glucose uptake by cells. In ruminants, because metabolizable dietary carbohydrates tend to be metabolized by rumin organisms, gluconeogenesis occurs regardless of fasting, low carbohydrate diets, exercise, etc. Precursors in humans the main gluconeogenic precursors are lactate, glycerol, alanine and glutamine. Altogether, they account for over 90% of the overall gluconeogenesis. Other glucogenic amino acid as well as all citric acid cycle intermediates, the latter through conversion to oxalocetate, can also function as substrates for gluconeogenesis. In ruminants, propionate is the principal gluconeogenic substrate. Lactate is transported back to the liver where it is converted into pyruvate by the Cori cycle using the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate, the first designated substrate of the gluconeogenic pathway, can then be used to generate glucose. Transamination or demination of amino acids facilitates entering of their carbon skeleton into the cycle directly, or indirectly via the citric acid cycle. Whether even chain fatty acids can be converted into glucose in animals has been a long-standing question in biochemistry. It is known that odd chain fatty acids can be oxidized to yield propionyl-CoA, a precursor for succinyl-CoA, which can be converted to pyruvate and enter into gluconeogenesis. In plants, specifically seedlings, the glyoxylate cycle can be used to convert fatty acids into the primary carbon source of the organism. The glyoxylate cycle produces four carbon dicarboxylic acids that can enter gluconeogenesis. In 1995, researchers identified the glyoxylate cycle in nematodes. In addition, the glyoxylate enzymes malate synthase and isocitrate lease have been found in animal tissues. Genes coding for malate synthase gene have been identified in other metazones, including arthropods, echinoderms, and even some vertebrates. Mammals found to possess these genes include monotremes and marsupials but not placental mammals. Genes for isocitrate lease are found only in nematodes, in which, it is apparent, they originated in horizontal gene transfer from bacteria. The existence of glyoxylate cycles in humans has not been established, and it is widely held that fatty acids cannot be converted to glucose in humans directly. However, Carbon-14 has been shown to end up in glucose when it is supplied in fatty acids. Despite these findings, it is considered unlikely that the 2-carbon acetyl-CoA derived from the oxidation of fatty acids would produce a net yield of glucose via the citric acid cycle, however, acetyl-CoA can be converted into pyruvate and lactate through the ketogenic pathway. Put simply, acetic acid is used to partially produce glucose. Acetyl groups can only form part of the glucose molecules and require extra substrates in order to form the rest of the glucose molecule. But a roundabout pathway does lead from acetyl-CoA to pyruvate, via astocetate, acetone, 
acetyl and then either propylene glycol or methamglyoxal. Location, in mammals, gluconeogenesis is restricted to the liver, the kidney and possibly the intestine. However these organs use somewhat different gluconeogenic precursors. The liver uses primarily lactate, alanine and glycerol while the kidney uses lactate, glutamine and glycerol. Propionate is the principal substrate for gluconeogenesis in the ruminant liver, and the ruminant liver may make increased use of gluconeogenic amino acids, for example alanine, when glucose demand is increased. The capacity of liver cells to use lactate for gluconeogenesis declines from the pre-ruminant stage to the ruminant stage in calves and lambs. In sheep kidney tissue, very high rates of gluconeogenesis from propionate have been observed. The intestine uses mostly glutamine and glycerol. In all species, the formation of oxaloacetate from pyruvate and TCA cycle intermediates is restricted to the mitochondrion, and the enzymes that convert phosphoenol pyruvic acid to glucose are found in the cytosol. The location of the enzyme that links these two parts of gluconeogenesis by converting oxaloacetate to PEP, PEP carboxykinase, is variable by species. It can be found entirely within the mitochondria, entirely within the cytosol, or dispersed evenly between the two, as it is in humans. Transport of PEP across the mitochondrial membrane is accomplished by dedicated transport proteins. However no such proteins exist for oxalocetate. Therefore, in species that lack intramitochondrial PEP carboxykinase, oxalocetate must be converted into malate or aspartate exported from the mitochondrion, and converted back into oxalocetate in order to allow gluconeogenesis to continue. Pathway Gluconeogenesis is a pathway consisting of a series of 11 enzyme-catalyzed reactions. The pathway may begin in the mitochondria or cytoplasm, this being dependent on the substrate being used. Many of the reactions are the reversible steps found in glycolysis. Gluconeogenesis begins in the mitochondria with the formation of oxalocetate by the carboxylation of pyruvate. This reaction also requires one molecule of ATP, and is catalyzed by pyruvate carboxylase. This enzyme is stimulated by high levels of acetyl-CoA and inhibited by high levels of ADP and glucose. Oxalocetate is reduced to malate using NADH, a step required for its transportation out of the mitochondria. Malate is oxidized to oxalocetate using NAD plus in the cytosol, where the remaining steps of gluconeogenesis take place. Oxalocetate is decarboxylated and then phosphorylated to form phosphoenol pyruvate using the enzyme phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase. A molecule of GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP during this reaction. The next steps in the reaction are the same as reversed glycolyses. However, fructose 1, 6-bisphosphatase converts fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, using one water molecule and releasing one phosphate. This is also the rate-limiting step of gluconeogenesis. Glucose 6-phosphate is formed from fructose 6-phosphate by phosphoglucosamorase. Glucose 6-phosphate can be used in other metabolic pathways or dephosphorylated to free glucose. Whereas free glucose can easily diffuse in and out of the cell. The phosphorylated form is locked in the cell, a mechanism by which intracellular glucose levels are controlled by cells. The final reaction of gluconeogenesis, the formation of glucose, occurs in the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum, where glucose 6-phosphate is hydrolyzed by glucose 6-phosphatase to produce glucose. Glucose is shuttled into the cytoplasm by glucose transporters located in the endoplasmic reticulum's membrane. Regulation, while most steps in gluconeogenesis are the reverse of those found in glycolysis, three regulated and strongly exergonic reactions are replaced with more kinetically favorable reactions. Hexokinase glucokinase, phosphofructokinase, and pyruvate kinase enzymes of glycolysis are replaced with glucose 6-phosphatase, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, and PEP carboxykinase. This system of reciprocal control allows glycolysis and gluconeogenesis to inhibit each other and prevent the formation of a futile cycle.
the majority of the enzymes responsible for gluconeogenesis are found in the cytoplasm. The exceptions are mitochondrial pyruvate carboxylase and, in animals, phosphoenyl pyruvate carboxykinase. The latter exists as an azazime located in both the mitochondrion and the cytosol. The rate of gluconeogenesis is ultimately controlled by the action of a key enzyme, fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase, which is also regulated through signal transduction by CAMP and its phosphorylation. Most factors that regulate the activity of the gluconeogenesis pathway do so by inhibiting the activity or expression of key enzymes. However, both acetyl-CoA and citrate activate gluconeogenesis enzymes. Due to the reciprocal control of the cycle, acetyl-CoA and citrate also have inhibitory roles in the activity of pyruvate kinase. Global control of gluconeogenesis is mediated by glucagon. It triggers phosphorylation of enzymes and regulatory proteins by protein kinase A resulting in inhibition of glycolysis and stimulation of gluconeogenesis. Recent studies have shown that the absence of hepatic glucose production has no major effect on the control of fasting plasma glucose concentration. Compensatory induction of gluconeogenesis occurs in the kidneys and intestine, driven by glucagon, glucocorticoids, and acidosis. References External links, overview at instate.edu, interactive diagram at wacron.edu, the chemical logic behind gluconeogenesis.